morning and welcome to Haynesville Lutheran Church's Being the Church at Home worship service for Sunday, August 30th, 2020, the 13th Sunday after Pentecost. Just a quick update this morning. I wanted to just let you know that my mother, who I've been updating you uh, each week, has finally gotten out of the hospital. She's entered a rehab facility and continues her process of healing there. Thank you so much to all of you for your care, concern, thoughts, and prayers. Let us begin this morning with worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Let us pray. O God, we thank you for your Son who chose the path of suffering for the sake of the world. Humble us by his example. Point us to the path of obedience and give us strength to follow your commands. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The reading of the first lesson is from Jeremiah chapter 15, starting at verse 15. O oh Lord, you know, remember me and visit me, and bring down retribution for me on my prosecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account, I suffer insult. Your words were found, and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart, for I am called by your name, O oh Lord. Hope God of hosts, I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice. Under the weight of your hand, I sat alone, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Truly, you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, says the Lord, if you turn back, I will take you back, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze that will fight against you. But they shall not prevail over you, for I am with you. The reading from Psalms this Sunday starts at the 26th chapter, verses 1 through 8. Give judgment, give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Trust me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind, for your steadfast love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I have not sat with the worthless, nor do I consort with the deceitful. I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord, that I may go in procession round your altar, singing out loud a song of thanksgiving and recounting all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. The second reading is from Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 21. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to these needs of the saints and extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who prosecute you. Bless and do not curse them. 
Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than what you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourself, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. And if they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. From that time on, after Peter confessed that Jesus was the Messiah, Jesus began to show the disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, God forbid it, Lord. This must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his dominion. The Gospel of the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Perhaps Peter could have used these words from St. Paul to center himself in what was most important. Instead, Peter was parlaying his relationship with Jesus and his desire to be in a position of political power in the Jesus party. Ah, yes, Peter the politician. Peter, whose personal aspirations to align himself with the promised Messiah, whom he believes to be a mighty military leader, do not align with Jesus' narrative of self-sacrifice for the greater good. Instead of becoming a positive role model for the rest of the disciples, Peter is becoming a problem. Power for personal gain sure has a way of twisting the narrative, doesn't it? Except Jesus isn't having any of it. Jesus has a few choice words for Peter, sparing the niceties of political correctness, calling him Satan or adversary and a stumbling block. There are no votes of confidence here for Jesus' right-hand man. Jesus also makes it clear to the rest of his disciples, following him will not be the path of least resistance or a path that leads to earthly glory. It's not about getting what they want. It's about doing what needs to be done for the sake of others. It's about self-giving love. And it's about rejoicing in hope, being patient in suffering, 
and persevering in prayer. Just like Peter, our personal plans and petty desires don't quite measure up to Jesus' path of self-sacrifice and self-giving love. Just like Peter, we can get swept up in the worldly wants based on wanting what somebody else has. Just like Peter, we are human beings easily swayed by popular opinion. But here's the thing. Jesus doesn't care about popular opinion. He cares about the lives he came to save. Perhaps we can relate to Peter today in 2020. It's been a long time, a very long time, since we've gathered for worship in the church building. March 15th feels like decades ago. There's a deep yearning to be together. Human contact is what we crave, and it's been long enough, we cry. For the love of God, we want to be together now. Our deep desire stirs the passion inside of us. We have created a picture in our minds, a picture in our minds of what we want, and that that is absolutely what we need for our lives to get better. We live in an on-demand culture, and when we want something, we want it now, and we'll do anything to get it. Yet, the coronavirus has no use for an on-demand culture. It doesn't play by the rules, nor does it care about popular opinion or individual wants or desires. The coronavirus will do what it will do with its death-dealing ways. And the families of 822,000 loved ones around the globe who have succumbed to it can attest to that. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. These are poignant words that we hear from St. Paul today for the life that we are living in the midst of a pandemic. It isn't what we want that's important. It's what we need. And what we need right now, and always have needed, is a whole lot of Jesus. We need a 24-7 relationship with him. A relationship that permeates every aspect of our lives, not just an arbitrary hour on Sundays for worship. A relationship that doesn't require a church sanctuary, or stained glass windows, or padded pews, or a fellowship hall. The only thing that Jesus requires for relationship with him is you. You. You in your living room. You in your kitchen. You in your garage. You in your garden. You at work. And you at play. Jesus isn't concerned with the where. It's the who he's concerned about. And that who is you. His church is not a building. His church is the people. Yes, we are tired. We are tired and we are weary right now. A pandemic alongside growing political unrest and racial tensions will do that we need to stay the course. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. We need to walk the path of Jesus for the sake of the most vulnerable among us, lest we become a stumbling block. We have counted, we have counted on the self-sacrifice and the self-giving love of Jesus all our lives. Can he count on us for the same?
we gather separately and together in the Spirit, let us pray for the needs of the world, responding to each petition with the words, In your steadfast love, receive our prayer. Caring for the church around the world, we pray. We pray for a spirit of ecumenical cooperation, for the health of congregations during this difficult time, for our bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders. Hear us, God our Savior. In your steadfast love, receive our prayer. Seeing before us your good creation, we pray. We pray for the repair of what we have harmed, for polar ice, for lands dealing with oppressive heat, for fields ravaged by storms and fires. Hear us, God, our creator. In your steadfast love, receive our prayer. Facing so many international problems, we pray for the strengthening of democracies, for peaceful resolutions to conflicts, for researchers seeking a vaccine, for racial justice within our nation, for our legislators to assist the lives of the poor, for an ethical election campaign. Hear us, God, our mighty fortress, in your steadfast love, receive our prayer. Surrounded by people with great and hidden need, we pray. For families frightened by the uncertain future. For those whose homes have burned down. For those who have been, been devastated by lost crops. For students deprived of effective education. For refugees and for prisoners. Hear us, God, our hope. In your steadfast love, receive our prayer. Aware of all who are sick and suffering, we pray. For all who are facing the coronavirus, for those without medical care, for those we remember here before you. Rusty, Riley, Lindsay, Sandy, Trudy, Carol, Nancy, Shirley, Karen and Dell, Dennis, Eugene, Danielle, Barbara, Mike, Ruth, Joanne, Cindy and Terry, Ellie, Judy, Judy, Natalie, Christina, Francine, Ken, Jody, Michelle, Mary Lee, Elaine, Matthew, Alice, Troy, Eric, Dorothy, Kari, Aubrey, Lottie, Judy, and Janine. Hear us, God our healer, in your steadfast love, receive our prayer. Confident of your love for us, we pray also for ourselves. Hear us, God, our friend. In your steadfast love, receive our prayer. Mindful of all who have gone before us in the faith, we offer our thanks. For the medical workers who have died of the virus. For friends and family we have loved. For the promise of everlasting life with you. Hear us, God, our homeland. In your steadfast love, receive our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, in heaven and earth, in the sure and certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Love your neighbor as yourselves. Thanks be to God, and we will.